It's 7 o'clock. I'll call the meeting to order. Can I have an acceptance of the agenda? So moved. Second by Mr. Hame. Uh, second by Mr. Norton. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Move on to uh, the rest of item number two, which is a walk-in period. Are there any walk-ins? No walk-ins tonight. We will move on to number three, which is the presentation of a check from Sustainable Situate. I don't forget to thank them. <laughs> so I'm Kathy Cerruti from Sustainable Situate, Kathy. and I'm uh, one of the founding members of the group, and I'm also the membership liaison. Uh, usually Lisa Bertola would be here. I'm sure you're familiar with Lisa. She's actually in France, flying back today, so she's probably at Logan. So that's why I'm here in her stead. Um, so you're, I believe you're familiar with Sustainable Situate. We're the local environmental group in town. And we are involved in lots of different conservation, recycling, uh, community garden, solarized situate, the wonderful Earth Day event that happened on Sunday. Yep. And we help with Chip Shape Day uh, recycling. So I'm actually here about recycling tonight because I have a uh, check to present. Um, to, um, and I just want to mention a little bit about our efforts in recycling because uh, we've help, helped Al and Kevin in the past. Um, We've helped them procure new, new recycling bins. Yeah. Okay. Just want to, I want everyone to be able to hear you. Yes, yes. It's important. We're good? Okay. Zach, can you hear uh, Ms. Cerruti? Okay. okay. Only Need, because uh, the this up? Thank you, Kathy. Yeah. Go, Kathy. Okay, so I'm here to highlight our partnership with the town uh, to help promote recycling throughout Situate. And we've helped Al and Kevin in the past to procure uh, those green mesh recycling bins that you see throughout town. And um, I'm here tonight to present additional monies to procure some more of those great bins. Uh, so I actually have a, a check for a very interesting amount. It's a very exact figure. It's uh, $1,142.46. And I want to present that to the town. Um, and before I do, I just want to thank our sponsors and our volunteers because this check is a result of their efforts. And I just want to mention the sponsors. Uh, we have a sponsorship program where sponsors uh, donate $100 toward a recycle bin. And uh, we had the following sponsors, um, Donner and Al Bangert, uh, Mary Norton for Cohasset Yoga Center, the Hingham Institution for Savings, Dr. Gordon Price, and Jim McGinnis for Village Market. And also we had a team of volunteers um, basically go to the transfer station and collect money um, on a cold weekend in October. And I just want to name those folks as well because it was a, it was a good effort on, on everyone's part. Lisa Bertoller, of course, uh, Jeannie Boyce, uh, myself, Kathy Cerruti, Gwen Morgan, Susan Ovenden, Jean Schildnick, and Jay Silva. So. Those folks helped make this happen, and we are thrilled to be able to partner with the town to promote recycling. And I see lots of bins out there. I see them being used all the time. Um, I think I could see even more out there, so uh, we're thrilled to present this check. And, and we are thrilled that you're <laughs> taking the lead on this. I mean, we are, we've been acknowledged, as you mentioned, just this weekend at the Earth Day uh, celebration and the, mm -hmm. and the wind turbine as a leader in the green initiative in the state. You know, we had the secretary there, we had the commissioner there um, on, a on a rainy Sunday afternoon. It was quite a turnout and a great event held. Um, so, and you were there in full force, yeah. and we appreciate you, we appreciate your effort, and, you know, keep moving us forward in the green area. Um, okay. Any other comments? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. I just, I just want to say, you know, both to you, uh, Kathy and Lisa, you guys have done a wonderful job with uh, Sustainable Situate, mm -hmm. trying to, like, encourage people to recycle. Um, whether it's um, 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 mercury items, you know, the, um, what do you call them, your thermometers, or uh, thermostats, rather, um, as well as the bins. And I just say, I commend you. I mean, it's, it's very rare that the town's able to find people who are willing to donate money back, and this is a good cause. So I think the board here is very encouraged, as well as the DPW, that, you know, there are people who are really willing to actually, you know, put their 
the, their words to, to the action, and, 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 and that speaks volumes to both you and your, um, the group Sustainable Situates. So thank you very much. Thank you. And I, last thing I just want to say is that I think one of the reasons we're so successful is that we partner with the town so much. It's just a, a wonderful partnership. So we hope to continue it. Kathy, thank you very Motion. much. This um, way. Why don't you give it to Kim? Okay. Motion, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Move the Board mm -hmm. of Selectmen accept on the town's behalf the kind gift of $1,142.46 from Sustainable Situate for the purchase of additional recycled bins to be placed in strategic positions throughout the town. This donation is made possible via sponsorship and collections. Second. Second by Mr. Haney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Kathy Vick, thank you very much. And thank you, Kathy. Make sure you thank everyone in your group for us as well, and especially the sponsors. John wrote them down, and we can just repeat that sure. again. Sure. Uh, Donna and Al Bangard, Mary Norton, uh, Hingham, Hingham Institute for Savings, uh, Gordon Price, and Jim uh, McMahon, uh, McManus, McGinnis, McGinnis, McGinnis uh, which is, so I'll back up, Gordon Price being the uh, optical center down on Front Street, as well as Jim McGinnis, who happens to be uh, situate um, village market. So these are people in the businesses who are also very uh, concerned about uh, recycling. So it's, it's a, great, a great thing. So thank you all, thank including... Even Al Bangert and his wife who are sitting here tonight. Thank you. Great. Moving on to item number four, which is a, a discussion vote of a Hawker's federal license. <coughs> and this is for uh, James Michael Healy. Are you here? Have a seat. How are you? Good. Good, Good. thanks. If you can just give us your address real quick. 71 Lighthouse Road. Okay. And we got your packet. We got your information. We got your letter. You want to... Um, set up a hot dog stand to sell hot dogs, sausages, and all that sort of stuff. We recently passed all of the, uh, are they considered bylaws or they call it? Uh, general. General policy. uh, policies. Policies. Policy. That's policy. the word I'm looking for. Um, policies, the, the guidelines for this. Um, and I know you weren't specific, at least in the motion, as to where you want to go. <coughs> I have um, a decision. Oh, good. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your plan and where you want to go. Uh, the plan is, uh, like I, uh, you pointed out, just hot dog sausages, maybe a couple sandwich specials here and there. Um, and I was hoping, if I could get your permission, to set up a Pier 44 parking lot. I spoke to um, the owner of the tavern yesterday, Jimmy Mulvey, and he had no problems with it whatsoever. Everything short of getting a letter from him, but I talked to him in person, and he, he was very supportive and didn't have any trouble with it. So. I know there's uh, the 300 foot rule with exception, so right. I would hope that would be an exception to, to that rule. Okay. Um, any questions? Well, let's talk about the location second. Is there any questions in terms of just what he's selling, what he's doing, and then we can get to the location after the fact? No. Okay. So let's jump right to the location. So. Um, the 300, are there any other establishments that that would be within 300 feet of? The Barker Tavern, Pro maybe? Probably. I mean, no, I it's, it's, it's way far. No, no, but I'm just trying to think of other places that sell food. Um, probably nothing in the harbor, right? Nothing in the harbor. Um, yeah. It's just barely within 300 feet of the tavern. Uh, I know the Barker would, is yeah, I know. way yeah. far away. So. Um, now, do we want to add this as a... Uh, Kim, do you have any... No, I Any think other we thought? really might want to ask, um, we could ask Officer Thompson to do the GPS circle, if that's a good Yeah. So um, just at about the 300 feet, just to double check. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, you've got water on all sides. The Yacht Club wouldn't be an issue. Barca Tavern may be in it, but I don't think they care. Um, Satua Tavern, and then moving back. Let me ask you this, uh, not that uh, with Pier 44. Um, we have a right to place it at the town. I say the town pier, the town landing, correct? On the other side of Pier 44. You mean Jericho ramp. Jericho ramp. I mean, is I know that, that's that that's state owned, but um, but despite being, uh, I know the feds have access at least to the thing, but it's town owned. Right. Town owned. Right. And my only reason for suggesting that location is it's a little bit further away from Situit, but also the only my only thing with that is <clears throat> being a boater, I'd hate to be in there taking up any precious parking spaces in the boat ramp park. I don't lot. think you would though because of that green space right there on Jericho which would give you a lot of access. For if, if, yeah, if the, yeah if the grass isn't a problem I know it's close to the road. It's we'd give you both. But even still I know a lot of people even pull up onto the grass because the 
that they have a big enough truck and a trail. They I'm can't. only I'm only thinking about that, Mr. Hilly, from the standpoint standpoint right. that you've got boaters who might say, "Hey, guess what? They're coming off the the dock next door. Grab something from you," as opposed to having to go around the old building at the uh, Situate Community Building. It's right there. Plus, boaters who are going down with the boat ramp, you might have more. Yeah. Opportunity. That's my only reason. Yeah, I just I look at the uh, Pierre parking lot as just a big wide open space. That's I know you guys aren't really going to be using it for anything for a while. Um, <laughs> well, wait till next month. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> for the meantime, you know. Yeah. Where are you thinking about going? In I was I'm just mainly thinking back, you know, almost back in the corner, or at least as close to the water as I can get, in the back rows there. Of in parking. the corner, behi almost behind the building. Or on the no, other side. if you're looking at the building to the right, between you know, in the parking lot between the building and the house next door. Really? Um, not a and real I just look at it as, as a right? wide open space, and there's plenty of parking, and I'm not going to get in anybody's way in the boat ramp. Um, shouldn't be any traffic problems. Right, Sean. He raises a good point because um, if if you have a long trailer with a with a pickup truck, an extended cab, or something like, they probably do drive up on the grass. So. He might find himself having to move back and forth. That would my first thought would have been, you know, you know, how does an existing it's within 300 feet, and how does you know an existing business feel about it? And, you know, and, and, you know, Mike, if he said he talked to Jim and Jim doesn't have a problem with it, then then I don't. You know, um, that would that would be my biggest concern, as uh, you know, we're within the 300 feet. But yeah. if Jim doesn't have a problem, I'm all I just look at it as a just strictly parking. I don't want to have. I mean, that's a great spot to be on the grass there. I just worry about people pulling up on a sidewalk or taking up a space in the trailer parking lot and having some sort of a problem, you know, with a boater or something. Um, Pier 44 is just a big, wide-open parking lot. I think part of our concern is, and I think John was alluding to that too, is there's not going to be a ton of traffic in the back of a parking lot, whereas he's trying to get you closer to some action. No, I understand. Yeah, absolutely. I just... You know, I'm still close enough, I feel, to the okay. actual boat yeah. ramp itself. And Rick? Um, this is a little awkward, I'm just going to preface. Um, I have no doubt at all you spoke to Mr. Mulvey, but I'm just a little worried about setting a precedent on just someone's, someone's word. Yeah, we need something. And, and, I, and I'm not I saying that. at all no that problem. I distrust you, but, you know, yep. there's potential for, you know, miscommunication and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and you know, Sean, I hear you. We, you know, you know, Mr. Healy and all that. But I just worry about that. Mm -hmm. So if we were to approve it, I would say, contingent. pending, contingent upon. I'm fine with a contingent upon thing. I don't want to like nuke you here and then make you come back, sort of thing. But right. that's my only concern, just in the context of precedence. Yeah, I agree. Joe. <clears throat> Again, on the on the future use, I think of Pier 44 concerns me, and I think you're probably safe in saying we won't doing anything uh, in the way of change over the next couple of months. No guarantee, though. But and also during those couple of months, we will probably, if we're going to do, allow you, we'll probably allow some sort of limited functions or meetings down there also. And that's if you guys have a, you know, if, uh, I don't know if somebody can keep me up to date. If you have a function, I won't be there. Yeah, I'm just thinking, but the function would take the parking places, and right. no, nobody would right. ever get. No, I don't want to get you guys any the town. I just want to make you aware of that. Uh, yep, absolutely. You know, the, again, I think that the John suggestion of Jericho would probably be a better one uh, for a lot of reasons for you and. The the reason why I was saying it was for a few reasons. One was. You've got um, the marina, the private marina right next to it. You've got the public marina. There are also parking benches right in the sidewalk on the water side so people can walk across. Right. Plus, yep. the other option is you've got people who are walking on Jericho. You might say, well, gee, I need people to park. They're still going to park at Pier 44 if they want to have a, a, a hot dog. They'll stop there and walk over. I just think that you have more of an opportunity with the ambiguity of what the board's going to do in the future with it. Right. But that's the only reason why, Mr. Hill. I'm not trying to no, sidetrack right. you here and say do it. I'm just thinking that given all these potential va uh, venues or avenues of, of business opportunity, I just thought maybe it might be helpful to you. That's all. Right. Plus, long term, if you're there with the grass, that's another nice thing. There's not too many green space. And certainly Pier 44 right, right now has nothing but impervious pavement that is not an attractive location. But with the grass up there, yep. you got some visibility with people driving by. That's all. So yeah, I, I like know. I was, you know, it's an idea, and uh, 
You know, I'm not talking about being so far off the road that nobody would see me over there, but I just look at it as a big wide open space and there is parking. I don't have to worry about people stopping on the sidewalk or in the road, uh, tying up trailer spots over at the town, you know, the uh, boat ramp. So maybe and if you guys end up doing something with that someday and there's no more space there, then that, you know, we can talk to you next time around about using that area over there. Um, Tricia, did you have any thoughts on this? Um, well, I guess since this is a new policy for us that the board's working under, I think before they come to you for approval on the goal board, they've already been vetted by the Officer Thompson and the Chief for any issues. Um, I'm just concerned about the precedence it sets letting something buddy bend at the Pier 44 parking lot. And this gentleman selling hot dogs how can we now refuse someone who sells something different on a peddler cart like ice cream or something different? And I'm worried about liability issues. I think it's decidedly different than our other beach parking lots. Um, with due respect to the applicant, he has a number of locations listing here, but the way I see this is um, it's not something we've done before and it could open up a Pandora's box, in my humble opinion. Now, if I understand the policy correctly, if I say you did grant me to use that space, I would be the only person with a town's hockey peddler's license that can use the space. Selling food. Selling, selling, selling just that food. specific item. Okay, all no, right. Not necessarily. We're, we're, our policy allows us, we do not restrict ourselves to one peddler per site. We happen to have six sites and at the time six applications, but there's nothing in our policy that for self forbids us to have only one peddler at one location. I think we alluded to that though. I think we right. it was our sort of yeah. intent, but it wasn't it's not written down or anything like that. Well, we if I may say we, we have ice cream vendors who uh two or three of them who go to the same sites I think. Correct. Uh, That's right. You know, at least two of them I think that I know of. So regarding the uh, Jericho ramp, the state owns the ramp, we own the parking lot, so yeah. there's nothing um you know Mr. Danny he's right about in terms of our access to it. You might get people walking with a hot dog to walk out to the, as a walk or stroll. I, I'm just. Yeah, I, I understand, definitely. Um, the Andrew Ryan, Pennycrest Road. If you look at Pier 44 at the building, if memory serves me correctly, is the parking area directly in front of the building, and then further to the left, where they have the trash receptacle, there's more area there, which would then be right up against the town, I think, area. No, that would be against the marina, private marina. The private marina? Yeah. But that spot wouldn't. Well, there's like one on space. Land. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're still on that there's a still little bit of You're still on the land, but you're next to the big propane tank mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Hmm. And the reason, I mean, you're the first person that's really come to us asking us to make an exception. We just passed the. Right. You know, the policy a couple of weeks ago, so that's why this is causing us to think here. Yeah. Um. <laughs> you know, let me, if I could just add to it, I, I guess I have this uncomfortable feeling about issuing, and I'm all in favor of, of your enterprise and everything, and I wish you'd lean towards the Jericho parking lot. I just have this uh, uncomfortable feeling about allowing it at Pier 44, where we're going in another direction completely with Pier 44. Uh, well, I like Mr. Dennehy's suggestion also. I just, you know. Could, could I ask Mr. Chairman if that he might go down and take another look at Jericho? I mean, I know exactly what John's talking about. And see how it That's, works out. I mean, yeah. it's easy to talk about it here. And not be able to, we can try to try to visualize it, but you know, you really to go down there, see if that would work. And if the answer is no, it definitely wouldn't work. Then maybe we could go back and, and make a decision on. I mean, that's my thought anyway. What's your th what, Trisha? What's your thought on that location? I, again, I mean, I, I would feel more comfortable if the board acted on these after the police department and. Officer Thompson has recommended it. Otherwise, if you're improving and there's something that we might not be aware of, but I mean, that certainly sounds like a, a better alternative location. Well, why don't, why don't we do this? Why don't I make a suggestion that, you know, there's only so many slots that we have available, and why don't we say that 
we'll put one slot on hold for you at okay. some location. Yep. All right. I'm and at, at this point, we want to get um, Officer Thompson to go in and look at the couple of locations you've discussed, and we want to get a letter from the Satua Tavern yep, no saying that they don't have a problem with being within the 300-foot barrier. And then why don't you come back to us at our next meeting. Okay. Give us a little bit of time to think about the spot, go look at the spaces ourselves, and then we'll go from there. But regardless of the number of slots that we have available, whether it's Peggotty, Minot, Egypt, or, or other, we'll, we'll hold one of them for you. Does okay. that sound reasonable? Right, yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. In other words, right. we're not going to act on anybody else's yet until we've had an opportunity to. Right, yeah. yeah that's that's, that's my line. area. We'll just say my area of preferences. Good. Jericho right. Road, they didn't, you know, in that, in that that's vicinity. And in, yeah. So I'm what we'll do is there's no one else on the meet, on the agenda tonight for uh, Harker uh, uh, Peddler's license. So we'll put you on the next meeting before okay. anybody else that may apply, and then All you right. would have the next choice. Works for me. Okay. Yep. So, but you have to get us that letter. Yeah, I will. Yeah. And um, mm. and then, Trisha, do you or who will who will ask Officer Thompson? Yep. Kim. Kim will, yep. Right. I'll get a call. I'll get the letter and give it to Kim so you guys. Great. Thanks a lot. That. Thank okay. You. And good Thank luck. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll see you next Come meeting. On. Thank you. Thanks. Move on to item number five, um, which is awarding a contract for diesel fuel, archive storage, and a backhoe. Thank you. Uh, we'll discuss diesel fuel first. Um, we are Such an interesting to topic, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, I know it's one of your favorites. Kind of is. <laughs> uh, Sean is sort of an expert in this area. <laughs> Sean, I thought I'd hear that from you first. <laughs> one always. Um, what we want to do is uh, use the uh, low bidder, or the best bidder, rather, from the uh, Commonwealth's competitive bidding of uh, a number of services, and this particular service is uh, for diesel fuel. We buy the diesel fuel in the DPW that's used by the schools, for the school buses, by the fire department for the big vehicles, and of course for all the DPW equipment. This amounts around $76,000 a year worth of purchases. And uh, we have a fuel management system such that as fuel is dispensed into any vehicle, uh, there's a chip that is uh, logged in, and that vehicle is actually built for the, the department that owns that vehicle is built for the fuel. So when the bill comes in, um, Christine Johnson splits it up among all of the uh, different departments. But we, nonetheless, we buy, we contract for and buy the fuel. Uh, we have been using another provider, Dennis Burke, um, Global Montello Group of uh, Waltham is a is equally qualified supplier and offers a price that's uh, very competitive. Great. So you're asking us to accept the lowest, uh, or the lowest one is the global group? They're the lowest ones from the state contract, yes. In discussion? Yeah, Al, um, the mock-up over the average, is it is it backwards? Is it just under four and a half cents if it's less than the full truckload? But 21, just a, your notes on the bottom of it? Could you explain that? The bids usually, usually it's a yes. It's, it's a it is a four. It's four point three four cents per gallon. Right. Over the uh, low daily Boston wholesale price. Right. For the quantities that we buy, which is less than truckload quantities. Okay. Okay. Um, then on top of that is added the relevant taxes, and the taxes that the t municipality pays State. is 21.4 cents. State That's federal only. tax, some uh, state road tax, and half a dozen other little add-on taxes for, mm -hmm. you know, clean up and a dozen other things. So anyway, yep. uh, we pay 21.4 cents per gallon for tax on top of those two components. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? And we're doing that pay, today. Anyone else would pay double that, like 46 cents. <laughs> Town municipalities don't have to pay at all. Great, thank you. Motion, both please move the board slip and vote to award the contract for ultra low sulfur diesel fuel to Global Montello Group Corporation of Waltham, Mass. at a bid price quoted in the statewide contract award ENE32. Second, second by Mr. Danhe. Uh, further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye, it is unanimous. The second contract. 
Yes, thanks. Um, we're here to discuss with you awarding a contract for an archives record management system. And your first question might be, well, why would the Director of Public Works be asking about a records management system? And that's because this is a, a step in uh, recovering uh, space in this building that has uh, grown to be filled with um, uh, yeah. important and also obsolete files and other materials. Uh, and if you remember at the uh, in the last year's in the budget for this year we included some money to essentially recover the use of space within this building. Um, we're combining that with some uh, money that was funded by CPC for archives of proper management uh, uh, through a project that uh, that Bernice has put forward, and there's about twenty thousand dollars in that project. Um, what we've done in terms of recovering space, this building was first we had a program to get rid of, uh, get rid of and, and recycle, let's call it junk that's been accumulated and cluttered the building. Then secondly, we had a uh, an auction of all items that were usable, we've got rid of uh, an old car in the cellar and then dozen, dozens of other items. The only thing we have left is a piano. We're waiting for someone to want the free piano. Um, the third step was then we hired a firm to come in and audit all of the stored files in the cellar. And they came back with a box by box, shelf by shelf audit of what is uh, in uh, the town cellar. And then they compared that to what the uh, state requires us to keep and what the state requires in terms of destroying of files. And we found that we had uh, quite a bit of work to do to get uh, in compliance with the state. And the benefit of that would be we'd have our files then properly stored, uh, separated in a way that then as files uh, reach a retention limit, they can be discarded through the proper state method of notifying the state, et cetera, getting permission from the state to destroy stuff. Um, and then also would be we'd be able to put all of our files uh, in a lockable storage storage area as opposed to fairly loosely uh, stored uh, in a in a, a very accessible place in the old public uh, grounds garage, uh, which doesn't meet a number of different codes. So um, we went out for a requested proposals. Uh, we got a proposal back from this firm, uh, who is uh, we then. Bernice went out and interviewed a number of other towns to see who used this firm, uh, and and uh, we ha had nothing but glowing reports. Is that correct? Do you want to weigh in Absolutely on this? Absolutely, very pleased. We went um, over to Easton, and we went down to Kingston in Betty Foster, the archivist, to spend a few minutes. We made this particular group has done all of the work in those three locations, done a wonderful job, and under some very difficult circumstances. We, in fact, have much better service here for our other communities have other than Is that it? I just want to thank Al for taking me on the tour before our meeting tonight to show me firsthand of what we're in for. Yep. The tour is available to all of you, by the way. <laughs> we'll take Sean's uh, word. <laughs> <laughs> just, just as an aside, to follow up, Benice uh, just said that we are in much better shape than some other communities when it comes to the archives, and that's do, I'm sure, and Benice will agree, in no small part to the people who have done this for years and years and years and done it unheralded in many cases. Uh, there are people who volunteer their time, who go downstairs and who, who try to who do their best and obviously they do a good job of getting these records in order and it's not the most exciting job in the world uh, to many of us, but it's so important and, and they volunteer and they just, they're fully devoted to it. So I think the fact that these records were in such good shape uh, speaks volumes of what they've done over the years. Over Very 20, true, yep, Joe. I'm yep. glad you brought it up because since 1976 when they brought the first archivist in and sent that person to Washington for training under a grant, um, the work has been going on in the archives and it's all been done by volunteers. Yeah. And each successive year we end up with some of the same people who were added to the group. We've done the same thing again, and it's really impressive what yep. they have learned and what they teach all of us. Special yeah. thanks to them. Yes. And good job arranging the funding and finding the sources for this, because it's exactly what the CPA money was for and the other monies as well. Nicely done. 
Motion, Mr. Chairman. Hold on for one second. I actually want to, uh, Bernice Brown, town clerk for people who are watching TV. I, I know Bernice didn't have an introduction, so I want to make sure we get that on. Um, questions I have, though, is this. Um, with respect to this proposal, um, are they scanning the documents so that these are going to be put into electric format, uh, electronic actually, format? Uh, uh, what, let me, the scope of work does not include scanning. And in fact, um, let me set aside scanning for just a second. Um, and, and also, I'd like to address the word archives and archivists. What, what you're referring to that has gone very, very well is are the important old records of our town, being able to retrieve information on births and deaths and old buildings and maps and that sort of thing. Where we have a problem is in uh, uh, old payroll records, old, uh, I don't want to name any department, but any, my department in particular, let me just say that, we have probably, um, well, a, a lot of stuff in the cellar that we don't know what it is anymore and because it's, it's hard to, to get at and probably is no longer relevant. The state requires before we throw any of that away that we document what it is, apply to the state for permission to destroy it, and then destroy it. Because that's such an arduous step, everything of those what you would call a nuisance files or even discretionary files that have built up over the years. So what they will, what they know, John, is what needs to be saved in perpetuity, and and what you need to be able to of those old payroll records be able to retrieve at any time when asked by someone of interest. Um, then uh, we have a choice at that point. We can either retain those records in a catalog system, which they will install, and or then we can, uh, what's it called? Microfilm. Microfilm those records versus scanning. Because microfilming is seen by the courts as a legitimate, as, a, as equivalent as the original, whereas scanned records can be modified. So for a very low money, uh, they can microfilm a lot of those old files that we need to keep. That leads me to the next question, which is that what we're proposing to do by passing this um, contract is that it's not going to impact, if you will, any type of strategic plan that the, the, the Board of Selectmen have with any type of future town office or town hall. In other words, what we're doing is more documents yes. as opposed to structural. So uh -huh. any money that we invest now is not going to, shall we say, be stuck in the building right. itself. It's going to be stuck with recoverable. what we're going to be doing in the future. Good right. question. Thank you. And just to clarify, we're doing item number four, which is basically that book of information right there where it says you can throw this away and you've got to file documentation for this in each box. Correct. So that's what we want to do, take that next step. Yes. And the $57,000, I heard 20-something of it's coming from CPC and the rest of it is in who's bu in your budget this year. It's yes, in the override. Excuse me? It was in the override. In the override. In the override. Okay, so that's so part of that. Retrofitting, you know, cleaning out downstairs right, right. records. Retention, remember we wanted the yep. records weren't fire proof and all that. That was part of the right. funds. And a clarification of the CPC funds. We applied um, three times for grants, but we applied for that money in stages. And where we're getting to be right now was really our end stage. Um, what we really had to complete in order to be able to go forward with microfilming <coughs> or coming up with secondary sources which would be scanned. So that puts us exactly where we intended to be as we proposed for three years. Great. We receive funding. Motion? Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for all materials and labor associated with establishing an archival records management program to King Information Systems, Inc. of Norwood, Mass. At prices quoted in the response to the competitive bid open on April 19, 2012. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. And the uh, the third contract we're going to defer till two weeks from now. Okay. Yeah. And this, can I make one little pitch? Sure. And that is that. <laughs> Zach, you got that? Oh yeah. This Saturday is Ship Shape Day. Uh, it's sponsored by the Beautification Commission, the Police Department, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Department of Public Works. And materials are available at Town Hall, rain or shine. That's how we do things in Public Works, isn't it? Uh, at the 8 o'clock on <laughs> Saturday morning. So people let's can just do say, it any time during the weekend. For instance, hypothetically, there's a group of people that want to participate. They should get up on Saturday morning and go to... Town Hall. Town Hall. Right out front here. Right out front. Pick up bags, gloves, grabbers. Uh, we have now a reflective vest for people who are going to be in, in any kind of street side location. 
Uh, the police will be out to help uh, make sure that traffic and everything is under control. Uh, anything that's picked up is put into these special bags and left along the streets, and then Public Works comes along Monday and picks it up. If a family okay. can't get to it until Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon, but they want to get the materials on Saturday morning, please come do that. Anytime during the weekend, they can do the pickup along the street. They can be assigned an area, they can volunteer for an area, and then uh, the goodies will be picked up on uh, Monday morning. And you can even direct them to an area if they're looking yeah. for it. Yeah, we have, we have a couple of places in mind. Great. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Al. Thanks, Al. This Saturday. Okay, moving on to item number six, which is a discussion vote for an emergency sewer tie-in at 21 and Vinyl Road. Good evening. Hi, Frank. Frank, Frank from the Board of Health. Frank, how are you? Frank, is this Texas tea? What me? Is this Texas tea? <laughs> you don't want to drink it. Jed, you Jed Clampert, you know? That's you know, a, you didn't get uh, the reference. <laughs> that's a distribution box on the property, and blue color was curious to me, too, uh, but I think it's just a reflection of the, the sewer, there, yeah. unfortunately. Um, but it, it basically shows that the uh, distribution box of the system is completely underwater. Um, this is actually relatively uh, a large lot compared to a lot of the lots that we've dealt with, but you'll notice uh, that most of it is in the wetlands, so it doesn't give us any option there. Two test pits were dug, first test failed. Um, the system is basically in the groundwater, as is evidenced by the distribution uh, box, and the uh, groundwater in the one test pit was at 12 inches, the other one at 27 inches. The residents uh, of the house, there's two people living there right now, is that correct, yeah. sir? Um, uh, so there's not as much, shall we say, stress on the system as there would have been in the past, so we didn't have any um, evidence of ponding in the yard, but they, they uh, can tell you that when family comes to visit and things like that, they have problems, problems with the system, which is not, not surprising given the conditions at the site. We also passed around a list of all of the uh, abutters and a map, and basically everybody except for the uh, butter immediately on the left looking at straight at the house, has already been connected to the sewer. They've got exactly the same type of, of system. I suspect that other house is going to be seeing us at some point in the future. But if you basically go around this house, uh, everybody else has been connected. Um, and given again, given the soil conditions, it's not a big surprise there. Uh, Mr. Spath has spoken with the DPW and presented his plan uh, to them. Uh, and uh, from, from talking to him, I guess the feedback there was okay. And um, that's pretty much it. We're looking at the picture here. Is it the... What's the, ad what's the address? 21? 21. I marked number 21 there. I think is I heard it. Oh, there it is. So it is that one. Yeah. Pardon me? Oh, yeah. The stuff this is must be uh, this property. That's something else. So You see the hat, the, the lots with the hatch that have been hatched oh, have all been connected. If you look. Uh-huh. Through so emergency or through? Emergency. That's the one that just connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I have one question. Well, sorry. Go ahead. question I have is where is this in the priority districts as far as sewering? Do you know at all, Frank? I don't. And, it's not. and I, uh, do you know, Al? It, it's not? not? Not at all. Not at all. No. Wow. I only ask that because it seems like there are a lot of wetland issues in this area, and I'm amazed it's not on a Can I jump? priority. I got to jump in jump before right Jennifer in. does. There's a reason why it wasn't on the priority district. If I misspeak, misspeak, tell me, Jennifer. Jennifer didn't have <clears throat> when they were forming those priority districts. She didn't really have a say in, you know, so give her some in, give them some input. It had to do with the number of homes. It had to do with <coughs> proximity to, you know, the existing lines and so forth. But there is that whole area, Roses Lane include Joe's old neighborhood. It's all clay and um, 
as you can see from the perks, it was what, less than an so inch, in two pack. hours or something? Mike? That's why the line is in the street now, is because we had to drive to make the school. Yeah. Yeah. And when they put that line in the street, they provided the stubs for these houses so they wouldn't necessarily have to dig the road up again. So you'll but, connect may, right may I, Jeff, That's not yeah. quite true. I mean, I'm going to vote for this, so, but that's not quite true. Those stubs were put in with the, with the clear understanding at that time that they were not put in uh, for those homes. We had a lot of discussion over this, and I remember this extremely well. It wasn't so that they could, they could time I mean, it, it just it, because it's covered in front of the house, but it wasn't that they still had to go through this. This, this whole area, I mean, just, just, if I may, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. Yeah. What we should probably do is not even go through this anymore. Just allow people from this area to tie in. I mean, it's, 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 I mean, it's all an emergency. There's nothing that we're gonna turn down. Uh, it's, I think if the house next door to Mr. White's or across the street or the next one who, who doesn't have sewage now uh, came forward, we'd give them a, we let them tie in. If the house is on, on uh, was a bittersweet, which is right up the street, uh, came forward, we'd have to let them tie in. Fieldstone would have to let tie in. Long Meadow, we have to let tie in. The rest of the area is all being tied in by the the, the, the new sewer project. Um, I I have gone through this as Frank knows for years and years and years and. Uh, I'm on the stage now. Tie everybody in. One thing I mean, it's, 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 they're all they're all in the same position. They're all uh, you can get the the system failed. It's, it's it's all clay or whatever. Tie everyone in. Why go through this? If these only come up, you know, it's, as you know, we've been through this. Really, when Title Five kicks in, which usually is when people are selling a house or have to, have to sell the yep. house. Yep. I went through the statistics of, of the emergency sewer connection, connection since I've been doing this, which was 2000. And, and when we started this, we were averaging four or five a year um, through 2007. And um, over the last four years, we've really, we've been either doing one or none a year. So I, I think for the reasons that you mentioned, Mr. Norton, that, that well, the economy has something to do with it too, unfortunately. But, but the, the fact that we, we have done this for a lot of homes already, and the fact is now that the sewer system, you know, the, the process of getting connected is, is, is happening, um, there's, there's less of an urgency for people to do it, and it only really comes up when they, when they need to do a Title V. So, you know, I leave it to the board as to, as to how you want to go forward on this. I mean, I, I, I'm probably being somewhat facetious, but there was no one in that area, and there's not that big an area left down there, who should, who should sell their house without coming to the Board of Health and getting a sewer tie in. There's no, it would be absolutely foolish for them to spend twenty-five dollars or $30,000 for a septic system when, judging by everything we've seen in the conversation, they're gonna get a, they're gonna get a sewer tie in from the Board of Health and from us. But, but, but we, we do, this is, I mean, this is a situation where the, the lot can't handle a system, so it would have to take a tight tank. We, we do, and Jennifer can tell you, I mean, every day she approves systems that, you know, in the perfect world, we would prefer to be on the sewer system, but because they can get a system in there, either an innovative system or they've got a larger than enough lot for a, for a standard system, we make them put, it, put those systems in there. But every house in this particular area that I'm talking about, it probably, you, one, for one reason or another, whether the water table is too high, whatever, you probably won't get a system in there. But don't don't they have to pay a betterment? If, no. Uh, well, I don't think right that's now. another thing we tried no. to discuss in the that's past. That's where I was going to suggest and, and say and, this. And it's fallen through the cracks. I uh, think we need to look at this bigger picture. I mean, I'm 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 certainly not going to vote against it. I, I understand it. But I'm, my point is, is that I think we need to look at the bigger picture here and say, okay, if we are going to be saying we're going to sewer this area or begin to give people the opportunity to tap into this town sewer, we got to look at it from a betterment perspective because that's the cost to be able to put in legitimate size pipes connecting it all then the bigger question is to what extent are we going to be doing that because once you begin to go down and put it in front of um, further down to Ann Vinyl I see there's a 40-foot way I'm not sure if that opens up access to those lots but assuming they're buildable if you have sewer which they would be 
then you know we don't want to open that up because then they're going to be free development to all those lots. On the other hand, there are other people who are on bittersweet if they have septic system Title V, they're going to be looking for it. So then you have to say, okay, what's the bigger picture here? And I think for tonight, obviously, this is a bigger question that we need to address, and maybe the town needs to look at the bigger issue and the big picture of saying, okay, if we're going to do sewer to some extent, what's the extent of it? What's the cost? Because I think we're losing money as a town by allowing a tie-in on an emergency basis as opposed to saying if you're paying under a betterment over a course of 20 years, you're, you're picking up those costs for the town. The town's picking up or, or deferring the cost to the people who are actually using, the end user. So. Sure. We did talk a little bit about this with that other uh, last fall when we were talking about tying in that house on, was it Captain P.S.? There was some discussion, and I think that's maybe a dis certainly a discussion for another night, but can't we have a policy, Tricia, or set an amount of money? This is, the good news is this is not going to be a spaghetti line, okay? So it's, we're not going to have to worry about this down the road. Any future DPW directors or anyone, this is... This is a straight pipe if, to the stuff. That's, that's correct. But couldn't we set a fee for, for, for cases like this? Well, for all intents and purposes, the Board of Health and the Board have already set a policy because by saying you're allowing the tie-in, you're saying you're not going to have the option of requiring a tight tank or a raised system. And that's really what's going on here, is there are other options available other than sewer tie-ins to these properties. But if the board wants to take the approach that they're going to allow the emergency tie-ins, then they're saying we're not going the route of tight tanks and raise systems for a variety of reasons. So there, you know, I think you can craft a policy, but you have to know all the elements of that policy and all the options available to you before you adopt it. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I, I the Go one ahead. difference, though, Tricia, we have a lot of ugly raised systems out there. And Joe will remember, we have said no to Board of Health, and they've raised. What we did say was tight tank. If it, your only alternative was a tight tank, then. I'm just saying you have options for addressing the problem that's before you. And if the board has a philosophy that they don't want, you know, that the raised systems are aesthetically unpleasing or tight tanks, create an undue financial burden that are greater than, say, any kind of betterment, then that, you know, that's your right. purview with the Board of Health to do. And every situation is different, and I don't even know if this particular property, um, it said, Jennifer said, tight tank or sewer connection, and the stub's right there. But I think, you know, this discussion is good to craft a policy to say, instead of these case-by-case -case basis, is you going to do it or not. You want him to go first or you? Go ahead, Frank. Frank. Uh, the Board of Health doesn't have a policy against raised systems. We, we make people put in raised systems right. if it's feasible. It wouldn't work here because of the perk rate at all. So the only option here is a tight tank. And, and the tight tank decision has is, is been a discussion that the Board of Health and the Board of Selectmen have had for over a decade. And, and the idea of the whole – one of the ideas of the whole policy, and I think the main one is, is to make sure – because we have limited capacity at the plant, that we don't have everybody sort of circumventing the district's plan that the town adopted by, by going through the emergency sewer connection. So we make them prove that they've got an emergency. Because if you put the people on a tight tank, you've lost that capacity in the sewage plant because the tight tank gets pumped into the sewage plant. So, you know, which way do you want to do it? And we've decided over the years that that rather than a tight tank, which decreases people's property values and is not a, a great way of, of dealing with things, that if that is the last resort, we do it through emergency connection. Right. And, and I just want to say, we need to do a lot more work. Tight tanks don't decrease property values. You know, it's unique to situate. Race systems are ugly. Nobody disputes that. But I think there's a bigger picture going on here. The entire venue has no sewer. You know, and those people pump, and they, you know, so, uh, and we had a few meetings a couple of years ago, and it raises a much bigger policy issue, and I agree that in this particular situation, there is, I mean, this is the best option that you're recommending, right. um, but that it raises, to Mr. <coughs> Norton's point, instead of doing it a case-by-case -case basis, you know, what's the board's approach? Go ahead, Rick. Joe, go ahead, Jeff. Uh, well, I just think, I mean, we're getting two issues 
to bring them up together. One is the issue in front of us tonight, uh, and the other is the the overall issue of, of, of policy as far as sewerage and, and, and cost of sewerage. I mean, I've always said that it's somewhat unfair for uh, someone to come in for an emergency system and be charged $5,000 while there are people down right now in, on Hadley Road and down at Minot being charged eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars $19,000 for the same hookup. And that just isn't right. We've got to be fair about the whole thing. But again, that's two different discussions. That's a discussion for a later night. And I think we should try to put that on the agenda to either address that question, do we continue to charge $5,000 or do we go with a standard fifteen or $18,000? But that's the discussion for the night. What we're dealing with here tonight is this issue, uh, which let's say is grandfathered in prior to the other discussion. So uh, I don't have a problem with this and I'd, I'd vote for it keeping in mind that we need a further Richard, discussion. Uh, both these gentlemen said what I was going to say. Just, just out of curiosity, the house has, I assume, a cesspool originally, right? I mean, the, the house, when it was built, had a cesspool? Right. And I guess my thought process is, when was the house built? 1960, 1955? 1960. And, and my thought was is that if the cesspool, just out of curiosity, uh, Mr. White, I'm, I'm just toying here because I'm just yeah. curious about it. The cesspool worked for those uh, numbers of years. How is it that all of a sudden, when you're trying to put in a, a leaching field, now granted, there are two different type of mechanisms here, why wouldn't an, uh, a yeah. leaching field work? Give, given that it worked with a cesspool, even if it were poor over cesspool for 40, 50 years, how is it that all of a sudden that now with a, a, a leaching I area, I'm asking it because people on TV are going to sit here and go, well, the house was built 50 years ago. Why is it that everything was fine until now recently? Now you have to tie in. House will be sold now. So you're basically putting the sewage into the ground. So that <laughs> and, and and basically, as a result of all of the buildup, and all of a sudden now we're having breakout, which means that all the effluent and things are popping up to the to, to the um, to the topsoil. So that people understand that's the reason why trying to put in a new system isn't going to work. That's just wanted to explain it. Thank you. Motion, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, just so we can get one thing clear. So there's going to be a five thousand dollar fee. For an emergency hookup for this case, and Kim, can you put on our um, next? If the next meeting's too big, then the one after that to discuss um, the fees for emergency hookups, and then we'll deal with that. Great. Uh, motion. Yes. Uh, move the board of selectmen vote to grant an emergency sewer tie-in for 21 and Vinyl Road. Second. Second. Um, further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. One last question. Thank you all. Mr. Uh, Mr. Lynch, how long have you been you've been on for 12 years with the Board of Health? Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Our condolences. I'm not sure. Think about another committee, maybe. Okay. Our board. Mr. Chair, Thank you. before we move on um, regarding this subject, I, I think the points that, that Joe and John and the rest of us discussed are really, really important. And we have a lot of things that we say we're going to put on the agenda. But I'd really like us to address this, particularly this area. I mean, Rose's Lane, Karen's Lee, we've already sort of dealt with that. We've dealt with these other ones, as you all just yeah. said. John had a good point. At some point, you got to draw a boundary, yay or nay. I think maybe in consultation with Jennifer and Al and Frank and all those guys, find out where all these other failing systems are likely to be in there. And maybe outline a, a really important area that we can look at to put our hands on the problem to see put mm -hmm. our hands on the problem to see how big we're talking about here. And financially, it's a huge thing that some people are able to get in for five grand and other people get in for 20. Yeah. And we really need to address this. Well, the thing is, as somebody brought up, you only address it when you're selling the house. Right, so but we as a town need to, to look at this and, and, you know, I think it's, it, two meetings from now is probably optimistic because we need a lot of data before we can, you know, make any real decision on this is the number of homes we're looking at. I'd also like to know roughly what our alleged sewer capacity is at the treatment plant. I mean, a tight tank, as, as Frank said, doesn't solve the problem. It just changes the mechanism by which the poop gets to the sewage treatment plant. And, um, you know, I'm, I too am against raised systems and, uh, and that sort of thing. So 
but we got to get our hands around this particularly for this district and it takes a while as we all know to implement any plan we've got our hands full with the kit right now and so on but we should start thinking about this so i think this discussion is really good but let's make sure we do it you, you have to remember if i mentioned it, but probably this is without any backup uh, in front of me the last 15 sewer titles that we've granted right all 15 houses have been sold absolutely within right because three the months title, title I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. right. absolutely so that's the reason that to right. answer john's concern of early you know why now it's because the house is going to be sold sure but proactively and in terms of like protecting the, the drinking water supply and all this sort of stuff i mean this place has obviously been failing for a long time it's just had you know low usage and uh, it's just better for the whole or overall district the more we can get on on sewer particularly given the financial impact of this in the sense of some people are getting in with an emergency and some people are not plus plus the other thing i didn't raise but if you end up selling you get on town sewer then you can expand your number of bedrooms whereas when you have a title five you can't because you're limited by the number of bedrooms plus one so if you have a three bedroom home you know you could blow it up then to a five bedroom home where under title five you can't you can only maximize it to four and while there is a cost there from sewage Granted, there's an increase with, you know, your taxes and the values, but, you know, it just creates a larger and larger. One last, one last comment. I don't want to say that sewage is my favorite topic by any means, but um, what we're doing, if, uh, if I, statistics are correct, 15 of the last 15 have all been sold. Probably. What we've done is we're giving, we've given sewage to 15 new residents of Citroen. Right. In the meantime, People who have had uh, lived here for 50 years and have suffered through breakouts and septic system and repairs and all that don't get it. Mm -hmm. So someone who just moves into town gets it immediately as soon as they pass papers in the house. Someone who's been here for 50 years doesn't get it, and something's wrong with that philosophy. That and, that I'll also, and I agree, and I'll also add to that they've been getting it at a subsidized rate. At the mm -hmm. Well, I think conceptually we all agree that the inequality of the rates is is unfair so I think right away at our next meeting we can agree to do something with that portion of it any sort of analysis in terms of what the f what this area's impact could be on the capacity That's of the sewer right. is secondary if we just say look you want to do it it's going to be the same price as you're putting in a tight tank or whatever or, or if you would actually hooked up to a betterment so I, mean, I don't think we have anyone here has the expertise to determine even though it, we see all these houses in this area we don't have the expertise to say this area I is agree. any better or any worse than any other area in the city right. kind of sewage is concerned. You know, just, it's just that these people have coincidentally all seem to tie in for one reason or another. That's all. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Great. Um, item number seven is uh, acceptance of a resignation from the Pier 44 Committee. The clerk want to read that? Sure. Um, I'd like to read the, do you want the motion or read the letter? Or How about the letter? Okay, sure. Um, this is from Ed DeSalvio, Edward V. DeSalvio, Jr., um, who's resigning from the Pier 44 Building Options and Feasibility Study Committee. Dear Selectman, please accept this letter of resignation from the Pier 44 Committee. As a member of the Pier 44 Committee, I was privileged to be part of the completion of the Phase 1 report, which has been delivered as well as presented to your board. Unfortunately, I will not be able to continue on the committee during Phase 2 of the committee's charge. I have enjoyed working on this project with a wonderful group of talented committee members. I also appreciate all the support that was provided to the committee by many town officials, including the town administrator, the building commissioner, and the Department of Public Works. I wish you and the Pier 44 Committee great success in the upcoming Phase 2 of this important project. Respectfully submitted, Ed Salvio, Jr. And I think we all want to add, you know, the presentation that they gave the other night was so thorough. They did a great job. It took, a, it took a while to do it, but that's because they put the energy and the work into doing it the right way. So, Ed, thank you for your leadership there, and um, hopefully we'll see you in some other capacity. I'd like to move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the resignation of Edward DeSalvio from the Pier 44 Building Options and Feasibility Study Committee, and further the Board thank Mr. DeSalvio for serving as the chairman of this committee, as well as lending his considerable time and expertise to this important town project. Se Second by Mr. Danhe. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. It is unanimous. Item number eight. Mr. Also, there's an opening on that committee now, so if anyone's interested in phase two. Um, Mr. Chairman, it's my distinct pleasure to have the opportunity to read the uh, Arbor Day proclamation as clerk of the board. We've been waiting 
all night for this. I know you have also, Mr. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I know you're wearing your green coat, too. Yeah, thank you very much. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. And whereas trees reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our town increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. And whereas the town of Situate has been recognized as a tree city USA by the National Arbor Day Foundation and desires to continue its tree planting practices. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen for the town of Situate, do hereby proclaim April 27, 2012, Arbor Day, and urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. And further, we urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. Signed by the Town of Situate Board of Selectmen, Anthony V. Vignani, Chairman, John F. Danahy, Sean Harris, Richard W. Murray, and Joseph P. Norton. I think you could have shortened that to I Love Tree Proclamation. <laughs> second? And second. I'll second that. Oh, wait, do we no no motion really necessary. No motion. Right. I'll still second it. Happy Arbor Day. Moving on to item number nine is the uh, town administrative report. Thank you. I just have one item, but um, I'd like to take a little time to discuss it with you. Um, one of the great things that was provided in the override was funds for staff training. And over the past year, we've been able to send a number of different town personnel to various training uh, opportunities. Those have ranged to management and supervisory training for the sergeants in the police department, to supervisory and management training for the water superintendent, to additional accounting training for staff in the um, accountant's office, um, to a uh, multi-phase training program for professional staff in the area of communication, time management, and customer service. So um, one of the things that we embarked on earlier this month was to look at the way we provide service to the customers in the town, both internally and externally. So at the staff meeting, the earlier part of this month, we spent two and a half hours developing a customer service mission statement. And as you can see from the memo that I, um, Kate gave you to the staff, um, every single department was asked to submit uh, what they viewed as a customer service mission statement. And department heads and staff were used to doing mission statements for their department, but they were asked to do it as a whole. And you have copies of all the ones that every single department in town submitted. And that's what we used as the basis to work on during the staff meeting and whittled those down after um, um, a long process, but a good process, I think, three. And um, right now, um, those three are being voted on by town staff, and um, hopefully all the responses will be on May 1st, and we'll be able to have a universal customer service mission statement for the town of Situate that um, we'll be able to use on stationery or on our website or just in every department to know that we're committed to our customers and how we intend to deliver that. That was the first step in a multi-phase um, uh, process. The second step was to provide all of the staff on the town side with customer service training. That started today um, in conjunction with a training program through Massasoit College. We sent 42 people through it today. There's four three-hour sessions over the month of May. There's a group in the morning, there's a group in the afternoon. Whole departments are going so they can work together to talk about customer service. And then we'll have another group run through in June. And um, we hope to have probably about 100 of the town staff run through that. Um, the second session will involve um, most of the highway and grounds and parks crew because they touch the public, but in a very different way than people in town hall or the library or the council on aging do. So um, I want to share all the good work that the staff's done with you and encourage you to come stop by one of the training sessions we're having over the next four Tuesdays and Thursdays 
and um, really just want to um, you know thank the community again for supporting the override for something that doesn't seem really important um, maybe but you know we can do wonderful things if we have adequate resources and and this is one I think that's really gonna provide direct benefits back to the customer who pay our salaries so I just wanted to share that with you Great. and we have a little ballot here you want us to circle which one of the three we like sure and can leave it in the box in Sheila's office great can we edit it a little bit <laughs> <laughs> Circle one. Great. Well, I think, uh, again, we want to thank the town for supporting the override. This is a small portion of what the town side is using with their funds. But this is something that Mr. Murray, you know, through the interview process that we have with you, said this is an important feature that we're looking for in our town, and we want to we want to focus on customer service, and we want to make sure that we uh, take steps in that direction. And, and I, and I'm sure he and everyone else on the board, you know, appreciate this effort. Um, there's always going to be those those tete -a -tete ish uh, occurrences in town and what we hope is that also when people come into town hall that they also are courteous <coughs> and, uh, um, to the employees here as well so um, great any questions any comments move on to item number 10 actually other business any other business from I just have one thing I'd like to bring up, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, I attended this morning, for most of the morning, a task force uh, formed by the, 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 the school department, including parents, educators, uh, psychologists, chief of police, dealing with teenage drinking and, and, and the, to try to come up with a, a clear policy or a clear set of ideas of how to address this, this serious if not sometimes fatal problem uh, and I just want to it's it's an ongoing process we had a second meeting this morning there'll be another meeting uh, uh, the around the first of May and there's a large regional meeting I think it's May 7th in Hingham uh, I just want to publicly thank everyone that participated the parents the 15 or so parents and the educators who, who, who participate in this who take their time to do it because it's it's you know, we can talk about a lot of things that, that we do for the youth of town, and it's all good. It's all good. But if, if we don't deal with the problem of underage drinking, uh, the fatal problem in many cases, it's all for naught. So I just want to bring that to everyone's attention and congratulate those people. Thank you. Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, this Saturday at 10 a.m. Uh, at the um, Situates uh, Gar uh, Grand Army of the Republic on Country Way. Uh, there is going to be the Situate Chamber of Commerce Candidates Forum. Uh, that's for all the candidates who are running uh, this May, and the, uh, there will be a, uh, a question and answer period for all those people. Donuts and coffee are going to be served, again, at 10 a.m. at the uh, GAR on Country Way uh, this Saturday morning at 10 a.m., and probably about an hour, hour and a half of what it will be. All the uh, prospective candidates who are running for office are invited and many of which will be showing up so it'll be a great opportunity for people who are interested to uh, participate so that's what I have Anything? yeah I just would like to um, express a thanks to everybody involved particularly Mr. Reedy Paul Reedy and the Renewable Energy Committee we had the wonderful pouring rain Saturday Sunday Sunday, Sunday. pouring rain Sunday opening of the uh, wind turbine we had the Secretary of uh, Energy and Environmental Affairs down, uh, Rick Sullivan, yep. I believe it was, Secretary Sullivan, and several other individuals. They were probably, what, I, I did sort of a rough head count, about 130 people crammed in the pouring rain tent. Yeah, um, 134, I think. 134, okay, yeah, that was before I left, so maybe that was, that was why I was off by a little bit. Um, but uh, Mr. Vignani had some good words, and uh, it was a great event. It was very impressive to see all the different people from the different state boards and commissions who are very aware of what we're doing in Situate, not only with the wind turbine, which was the subject at hand, of course, at the time, but the solar array and ESCO was mentioned. And I mean, across a whole spectrum, we are doing a lot of energy savings and money savings, which is good for the environment and good for the town and good for jobs all at once. So it was just a great event. and. Um, of course, it was the only day it rained in the last six months, but so it goes. 
to go back. I just I'll add to that. It was a you know it was, it was interesting to see what uh, leader the town of Situate is in the green um, initiatives and the fact that we're going to be paying for 100 percent of our electrical needs through the wind turbine and the solar array. Um, you know is quite impressive and probably we're probably the only community in the state that that can boast that um, a great turnout by people Al Banger and his group that put the event together um, unfortunately it was um, not a really family event because of the rain but um, there was still a good turnout there and just uh, the, whole, the thanks of all the people that had participated in it you really realized how outreaching it was to the people that were involved in getting that um, turbine to, sw to uh, spin so Thanks to all those people again. Um, just repeat also that this Saturday is Ship Shape Day, so please, if you have an hour or a little bit of spare time, go pick up a bag and, and pick up some trash in the community. And la uh, go ahead. One more, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll just jump in for one okay. more. Quick. Yeah, the, the last thing I want to say is I'm sure everyone felt it in the air yesterday, but baseball season started yesterday. <clears throat> I know John knows as he's got a little guy out there with myself as well and uh, so all the fields will be full with uh, nine-year-olds through 16-year-olds playing baseball so go out and watch them and cheer them on and and uh, enjoy the the spring sport and try the, care slowly around the fields yes, that's that's just a, uh, on a note that uh, something that you mentioned mr. chairman as far as the savings from the wind turn but wind turbine and the solar field I've probably heard in the past month five different uh, ways that that money is going to be spent. Okay. Everyone seems to have <coughs> be, be talking about, well, we can do this and we can use the money from the so I think we should have a conversation, this board, as, uh, as to how that money is going to be spent, the savings are going to be spent. There's quite a few options, not quite a few, but there are a couple of options, and I think we have to discuss it before we go much further before too many more people start spending it for us. Great, I think that's a great idea. You know, we, we clearly, when we talked about this a year ago or something, we clearly said we had not decided on which way we were gonna do it. So, uh, um, so that's a great idea. We set up the revolving fund to, to account for it, so now it's a matter of figuring out how we're gonna allocate it out and okay. how we're gonna yep. utilize it to help our future. I don't know, when's the best time for that meeting? Um, we can figure that out. Okay. Yeah. The other thing I'd like to follow up on Joe's point is we all, myself included, use shorthand wording when we say the uh, wind power is going to uh, contribute half of the town's power and the solar array is going to contribute half of the town's other power. We use that meaning town and schools and municipal buildings. I've been approached by many people who hear us when we say town and they say, oh, and they hear us oh. interpret all the residents as well and so I just you know good point when we're making points we should really I I'm trying to use the word myself municipal and schools use those words um, particularly drawing attention to the uh, sewage treatment plant up front but I had a interesting conversation with a neighbor who was surprised that his electric bill hadn't gone down <laughs> literally <laughs> last week yeah, yeah. So it, it, the savings are, just so people understand, it is for the municipal buildings, the schools, the water treatment plant, the sewer treatment plant, the street lights, the town hall, um, you know, all the municipal buildings and the expenditure that we have is where the savings will be incurred, um, not unfortunately to the households in the town. Any other new business? Move on to um, item number 11. There are no, uh, there is no correspondence, Mr. Chair. And number 12. Move the board of selectmen vote to accept the minutes of April 5th and April 9th, 2012. Second, Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. And executive session. Move the board of selectmen vote to enter executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the government's bargaining or litigating position for the Department of Public Works and Fire Department. The board will not return to regular session this evening. Yes. 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 Good night, folks. Thanks, Zach. Good night. Thank you.